Hello and welcome to another wonderful episode of the Terry McGriff Show, along with my illustrious co-host, Mr. Andre L. Sullivan. How you doing, Andre? Man, I'm good to be here. You looking at me and me looking at you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We appreciate you being here. Thank God we all here. You know, um, just had a great weekend. Obviously, we just come out of the um, weekend, Halloween weekend, had all the all the big games over the weekend, Florida, Georgia, and so forth. Big couple of big SEC, I mean, AC, Big Ten games along with ACC. So it was a big weekend football-wise. Coming toward the home stretch of college football. Um, just had a lot of good things going on with, with, with sports. World World Series, basket, NBA starting up, NHL starting up. So October is a busy, busy, busy month in the world of sports. Um, one of the other things I just wanted, before we get started, folks, if you love what we're doing here and you'd like to keep us providing this content, please hit that like button. Also, hit that subscribe button. Once again, please uh, just take care of our people. Uh, watch game film. Um, and uh, Team Sports Better Rec, along with the Women's Tackle Football League. And also, I'm repping the Mandarin Athletic Association. I got the little T-shirt on today, Mandarin Tigers, uh, you know, helping them out on the board over there. Just those wonderful people with those youth. A lot of the youth over there, baseball, football, cheer, all that good stuff. But, man, let's tell you, let me tell you, this one of these weekends that made you think. Um, we're going to get into our topics, but not, and I'll go through them. Our topics is basically this. Now, topic number one we're going to talk about this week is what is wrong with the state of Florida recruiting? You know, far as our kids staying in state, what is going on? You know, all three schools are kind of hurting right now, the major schools. Uh, number two, we're going to preview the college football. The, the, the rankings for the college playoff comes out tonight, being Monday night. Uh, if not tonight, I believe it's Tuesday. Excuse me, Tuesday. Um, and then um, tomorrow, we're also going to deal with uh, – Talk a little Jags with about Trevor Lawrence. Is he progressing like we think he is, or is he is he regressing? So um, those are the things we're going to get into. Like I said, once again, if you like that, please hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button. All right, so let's jump into it. Let, let's talk about this. You know, watching at the end of the Florida-Georgia game, which was not much of a game, but um, what, was, what was very, very telling was um, a shot crossed the bow that Kirby Smart, and a lot of people think he made it at um, Dan Mullen, was the statement of recruiting is the most important thing. I don't care how good a coach you are. I'm just paraphrasing. I don't care how good a coach you are. That will not beat great players. And when you recruit mm. well and you've got a lot of good players, you don't have to be this greatest coach. So I, I'll take it for that. And But I think it was a shot across the bow at Dan Mullen and also at the state of Florida, because if you was to go watch that game, you saw exactly how many stars playing for the University of Georgia that are from the state of Florida. I mean, ex even Dalvin Cook, former Florida State All-American, his brother's playing for Georgia. A lot of kids that are starring in the last, not just this year, but the last few years are from Florida. A lot of the stars on these teams, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, you know, uh, LSU, a lot of these kids are going to out of state. And is that is that talking about the actual state of Florida or the universities or the culture that's going on here? I'm interested to hear what you're saying about it. And I'll give you more of my take about what you think about why a lot of our great players are choosing to leave the state of Florida and not stay at home at one of these major state institutions. Um. You know, that's a question that gets asked in the media a lot, especially, obviously, we're in the state of Florida. But but let's look at it from a totally different perspective. Um, let's take let's take away sports mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. I think what we have, especially when you have college, mm -hmm. you have a, a child who, for... 12 plus years have you know mm -hmm. from kindergarten to 12th grade been in one stationary area mm -hmm. and and barring money you know we're gonna take out the financial part of it you know they get a chance to go to college mm -hmm. you know the typical child and or student doesn't want to be near mom and dad 
and, and the typical child in the, in the state of Florida, they've been to Disney World. They've been to SeaWorld. They've been to Universal Studios. They've seen Miami Beach however many times. Mm-hmm. You know, they've gone to Orlando. They've been in the, the Tampa Bay. Uh, you know, they've been to the Gulf of Mexico. They've been to Pensacola. They've seen the capital of Tallahassee. Uh, they've been to all of the major springs that the, the great state of Florida has to offer. And they've endured the sunshine as they've grown up. They want to get away. They, they they typically want to get away and because they know they can always come back. And, and that's what you have in the average student. Now let's now, now let's add football into it. Mm-hmm. When's the last time a, a team from Florida won a national championship? Florida State was not, the last one to win a national championship. And that was in 2013. You know what I mean? So – and it's not to say that these teams haven't been good. You know, Florida State has, has filled with some okay teams. Florida has definitely filled with some good teams. Miami, you know, even though they haven't been great, great, they still play good football. UCF has played uh, tremendous football here in the recent years. Uh, University of South Florida has done their thing. Then you got your HBCUs like Bethune Cookman, Florida A&M, uh, Edward Waters uh, University, Florida Memorial down there in South Beach. But you got to realize they're trying to get away from home. Um, if anybody who lives in Florida and knows Florida, everything is within a six to eight hour travel. It's not hard for mom and dad to come find you. Mm-hmm. And so when you when you get a chance to go away and just truly engulf yourself into college life and then even more engulf yourself as a college athlete, people are trying to take that chance. People are really taking that chance. And then it comes into the recruiting aspect. Florida's a hotbed. You know, it's like playing that, that game of spoons. You got to grab that spoon before the next person grabs the next to you. And that's what these recruiters are doing. They're, ma- they're putting that extra gas in the tank to drive that car down here to, uh, to the uh, Everglades. They're, they're putting that extra uh, mileage uh, on those planes to go down to Miami, then come up to Jacksonville. They're, they're, they're putting that extra effort into seeing and getting those boys out of Pensacola, Tampa, uh, uh, you know, Ocala, you know what I mean? And so it's such a hotbed for talent. I mean, in the city where me and you live in, Jacksonville, there are about 22 high schools, and all of them are playing good football. You know what I mean? And that's just football. We're not going to get into men's and women's basketball. We're not going to get into lacrosse. Baseball or softball. We're not going to get into baseball, uh, soccer, softball. It, it, the, the list goes on. Track and field. You know what I mean? So it, it, the list goes on and on. So it, it's not a, a hit on Florida, Florida State, UCF, Miami, Bethune Cookman, Florida AM, and Edward Waters University, Florida Memorial, uh, USF. You know, it's not a hit on those schools as far as they're recruiting. It's just that they're picking out of the bag that the rest of the country has their hands in, too. And so, you, you know, when you put that all together and now we're fielding a team, you, you know, I can I can only offer so much as a recruiter. You know, I can tell you, yeah, you can get that jersey number. That's that's cool. Yeah, I, I, we can put you in the dorm right next to the stadium. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But you also can't offer the freedom of knowing mom and dad can't pull up on me. You also can't offer me the freedom of knowing that I'm literally million, I'm miles and miles away from everything, and all I have to do is focus on football and school. You know, the University of Florida in Gainesville can't offer the same things that the University of Wisconsin can. Florida State, who's right there in, in, in the capital of Florida, can't offer the, the conclusion that Iowa can. You know, the, the University of Miami, with everything that they have down there in South Beach, can't give you the peaceful, the peace of mind that our Oregon can. And then on top of that, to, to your note, the 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 HBCUs like Bethune Cookman, Florida A and M, who just joined the SWAT conference, can't give you that. Even though they they have that big game feel, that there's two stadiums who hold about fifty thousand plus, can't give you that big feel that Grambling Southern, Jackson State have because they're just getting back. They're just getting to that top tier, and so 
Yo, I mean, yes, it's, it, it, it sucks because as a recruiter in Florida, you know you have a plethora of talent around you. But you also know I better get my foot in the door before somebody else is close as it in front of me. Mm, those are some, some interesting points. Interesting points because I never really thought about getting away for necessarily the 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 – peace and serenity of quiet areas and stuff like that. And obviously we know about being away from home, but my thing was deep was that I would thought would have been the selling points was number one, the, the, the fact that you could have parents come and see you. And I understand some kids don't want their parents coming. see you. But what I also was thinking about, you have the amenities of being near those big cities, Tallahassee, obviously you're in the state capital, Gainesville, a pretty good side, nice side city, Rich, real, fairly close to Orlando. Um, obviously, you, Miami. Come on, you, you're, in, you're in Miami. You're in South Beach. You got everything you can think of as far as vacation and lifestyle. And if you want to party, all that stuff. I totally get. Um, one other thing, what was kind of puzzling. I want to get your take on this one. Was um, I think the rise of all the mid-major schools, the South mm. Florida, the Central Florida's, and I think, and me, a lot of the times, I think. They have taken those guys, those three-star athletes that developed into four- and five-star athletes that would have been the depth players on Florida, Miami, Florida State, would have been your second and third, but there wouldn't have, dropped, wouldn't have been a drop-off in talent to keep the play level high. I think, you, I think the main thing, as you said, the, the talent has been basically picked over. You know, Even though you got, you, there's tons of talent here. It's not pulled into these three states' coffers like it used to be, which is the which goes back to the original question. And you kind of answered a little bit. People want to get away from home. But what I wanted to find out, in your opinion, was it a culture thing. Besides wanting to get away, besides wanting to have some place different, it's a little bit more peaceful life uh, upbringing while you're going into your young adulthood, is it? that they're just not fans of the schools and have any loyalty to say, I want to go to this school or that school anymore. You know, there's still be usually fans of one school or another, but this has been a totally, see, I'm a little bit older generation. So we always kind of root, root, growing up rooting for certain schools and stuff like that. And as a kid, you know, one day I want to play for X, Y, and Z school, whether it be Florida, Florida state of Miami, you pick one and you kind of said, yeah, you know, I give, and give you an example. I think Dalvin cook was a Gator fan. For the longest yeah. and then next thing you know he goes to florida state and on top of that now his brother did not even go to florida or florida state he went to georgia and i understand the whole thing about amenities all that stuff like that but when you're looking at what georgia has to offer you know i just didn't couldn't see what georgia offers outside of their facilities which they do have probably dollars facilities until florida builds theirs then 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 um then florida Plus the cultural thing that I was thinking about, you know, you had the issues with with um, some of the things about the about black white issues. We're gonna just call mm -hmm. it, leave it at that, at the University of Georgia. But yet they're steadily, steadily getting you know a lot of African Americans to come there. So, man, um, obviously you get them at all the schools, but it was that was really a topic going on at Georgia for a little while, especially with a couple of quarterbacks, which I won't let it be nameless, and so. You're wondering what was going on, and then you got to think about it. Let's 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 go because Florida State ha and Florida and has their struggles, but they don't have as issues as Miami. Miami is in their own state basically, and they're losing some of their own citywide top talent to Alabama on the regular. Some of the best players that live in that city are not even they're leaving the state, going directly to Tuscaloosa. So you know, it's it's amazing how. We tr tried to figure it out as an outsider looking in. And it would be amazing if you could just sit down a panel of these ex-Florida guys, you know, that, that moved out of state and get their take. You know, you got a lot of guys here all along the way that does that, obviously. For the, but we're talking about not, it's not about just your two and three star. We're talking about your top five star, your four and five star talent that that should be dripping and dying to stay at home. But I right, look like they're just ready to get out the door and get out of the state. And then also, I want people to pay attention to this. Um, there's no loyalty in recruiting mm -hmm. at all. I need, I need people to understand that. I, uh, for example, uh, Reggie Wayne, uh, half of his family came right out of Grambling. Mm -hmm. Came right out of Grambling in Louisiana. They didn't even offer Reggie Wayne. Mm -hmm. 
They didn't even offer him. Uh, you know, Pouncy Brothers, a lot of people don't know, they come from the bottom down there in Miami. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they played in, in those, those mutt bowls, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Miami did not offer them. You know what I'm saying? So there's no loyalty in recruiting. So uh-huh. and so to, to to use that note, you know, a lot of people are like, well, we want to stay home and, and play for this. And yeah, you might have grew up the biggest fan of, of of XYZ, but now you at the top of the alphabet playing ABC. So you know what mm-hmm. I mean? You you kind of have to, especially in student athleticism uh-huh. and the way they go, you got to go where the money is. And uh-huh. if someone's offering me a partial – Next to a full, I'm I'm going with the full, mm-hmm. especially with the way the NIL is set up right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going with the full because why am I paying out of pocket mm-hmm. to 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 pay a, play a sport that you wanted me to come play? Mm-hmm. So I, you have to also look at that. And here's a, here's the, the biggest point that I think people tend to forget about: college in 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 any aspect is a party. <laughs> I, I don't think people I think people tend to ignore that yes there are mm-hmm. academics people mom and dad's at home yes you, you're, you're there to, to get that degree but it's a party I, listen Florida is a big party school yes it's one of the biggest Florida State too Florida State it's a huge party school one of the biggest University of Miami one of the biggest Fam, FAMU's homecoming was yeah. a show Yes, just this past weekend. Just this past weekend. Uh, Bethune Cookman, same thing. Edward Waters College just, just got done having DJ Envy and, and T.I. come for their homecoming. Uh, Florida Memorial, who's all the, also down there in South Beach. Big, big mm-hmm. stuff. But there's also big stuff around them. Mm-hmm. And I think people tend to forget that UCF, huge part of school. UCF is literally a city in itself. Right. But it's right next to Disney World. Sea World and all the other. Sea World, Universal and all that stuff. It's an attraction. The school is not the attraction. Mm-hmm. Places like Wisconsin, it's nothing but Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. There's nothing but Badger football. Or Ames, Badger Iowa. Or, you know, or Iowa. There's nothing Nebraska, there. Nebraska. Nowhere. You see what I'm saying? And, and I can go on and on. There's nothing. The, Alabama. There's nothing there. Well, but Auburn, Alabama. Where, they, where they're known for in the middle of the night, their thing is to go tip cows over. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There's nothing there but that. We have the problem in Florida of fighting our app, our literally natural uh, places the, of highlights, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Our natural attractions, the beaches, the sun, the, the the things that come with all of that. They have literally come here for spring break. Why do I want to go go for 20 minutes for spring break? No, I really want to go 40, 45, an hour, uh, two hours for spring break. And I mm-hmm. think people tend to forget that part. Mm-hmm. about college yes they're there for the degree parents yes yes they're there to to to, to be the thing that they want to do when they get out of there yeah we get that but it's a party people i need people to understand that it is a party and that's what people think about with college sports is too i don't think people realize how much it means to a child to know that their mom and or dad or auntie, uncle, whatever, got on a flight for three hours just to see them play or even play one play in a game. Uh-huh. It's nothing for them to pack up the car and come two hours down the road. And, and yeah, y'all can go back that same night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Homecomings mean homecomings mean much more in in in, the, in BYU than they do at Florida State. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Homecomings mean much more than they do at, at, at Nebraska than they do at the University of Florida because that child came from who God knows where. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they might even came from Florida. So I think people have to understand those those little tidbits when recruiting. Yeah, it sucks. All of our players are absolutely getting plucked from us. They're getting plucked. And we're getting kind of a, either the low-hanging fruit or the one that we can just so happen to got lucky and re- reach up there and grab. But, I mean, that's the nature of the game. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. So let's move on. Let's pick, speaking of more college football, let's, let's talk about 
getting ready to happen. We're, we're in, in the month of November now. Now it's people starting to jockey for these positions for the college football playoff. The, what's the final four as we're talking about. And so let's kind of look at this. Um, I think there's some, uh, for the first one, I think there's going to be some interesting things happen. We obviously know we got the whole month of November to play, and the, then you'll have the championships in early December, which will all make impact. But I think positioning yourself, if you're somewhere down in the pecking order, you're going to have to kind of start your run right now in hopes that somebody else loses because the way it looks right now, it's going to be hard to get in that top four because let's go right now to top AP top four rankings. you got University of Georgia, obviously number one pick. Cincinnati, number two. Alabama, number three, which you can easily jog. But the, thing, the good news is if both the Alabama and Georgia went out, they'll face each other. Um, then you got... Oklahoma and Michigan State. Those are your top five right now. Um, Oklahoma seems like it's going to figure out a way to make it through their season with, and win their conference. Michigan State has the, probably the hardest road to hope with, the, with their remaining games. They had a huge victory this weekend over their arch rival, Michigan, which, which probably seen one of the best backs I've seen out of that school since Le'Veon Bell. The kid was just amazing. You know, five touchdowns that he ran for, um, just moves that make it wow. He, he's Le'Veon Bell. He's Le'Veon Bell on steroids. I mean, Mel Tucker. Once again, give Mel Tucker a hand. Good for you, Mel Tucker. You went and you know you left Georgia, got that job at Colorado, and turned that into Michigan State. And look what you've done with that program. Got him undefeated right now, eight and zero. That's amazing. So I hope in me in my book, he's probably the top of the coach of the year rankings in my book because nobody was expecting Michigan State to be what they are right now. But saying that, you're talking about, you're talking about, you know, trying to get in this position. So my thinking, my guesstimating and my little crystal ball, it says there's going to be, it's not going to be like it is now. I, I think Georgia's going to remain number one. I think they're going to bump Alabama up to number two. And Georgia will be, um, I mean, excuse me, um, Alabama two, Oklahoma will be three and Michigan State will be four. I think Cincinnati's not going to make it in for the simple fact is when you're looking at the records of all these other guys and their resumes, their resumes are still stronger. That has nothing to do with the AP poll. Um, I, I, just think, I just think because the way Michigan State won their game, it's going to put pressure on that selection committee to put them as the Big Ten representative, knowing that they still have a game that they have to play Ohio State if they play in the championship. So if obviously Michigan State's going to, if they miss, if they, if all these power five schools went, went run the table here on that, they're going to the playoffs, obviously. Give you an example. If Georgia, which I predict they're going to do, they're going undefeated. They're making the playoffs regardless if they lose the championship game, unless they get just totally embarrassed by whomever they play. But if they're playing Alabama and Alabama is that one loss, which was only to Texas A&M, and they lose a close game to Alabama in a neutral site game, they'll still be two or three seed in the college football playoffs. Michigan State goes undefeated, they're in. Oklahoma goes undefeated, they're in. I just see, I just gonna figure out when they're gonna go, when they go strength of schedule and all that, Cincinnati's just gonna once again, as a group of five, be the odd man out. Now to get your take on it. Um, now, usually I'm agreeing with you when it comes to strength of schedule stuff, but. One, I, I, as much as I like this Michigan State team, and I really do, I love what Mel Tucker is doing up there with the Spartans, but I don't see them beating Ohio State mm -hmm. that late in the season. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I could be eating my words in about a couple of weeks here, but the way Cincinnati is playing, it's a reason why the AP poll has them number two. And, and unless Alabama does something amazing or Oklahoma does something amazing, I don't see the AP poll dropping them. And, and, and that's my issue as to why, you know, Cincinnati will stay up top. And, and look for them to kind of stay there. I think, you know, Alabama, Oklahoma, Michigan State, those are your bubble teams. I'm not saying, you know, Cincinnati is going to come into those – the, the playoffs and just, oh, my God, blow everyone mm -hmm. out. Not at all. And <laughs> I'd, I'd lose my credentials for saying such things. But mm -hmm. the way they're playing right now, 
to 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 at least get their foot in, they're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get you. I get you. I just was thinking, you know, with the way this playing out, that uh, Cincinnati could slip up and lose lose a game. I doubt it because every game for them right now is a playoff game because they can't afford to lose one. You know what I mean? Right. And stay in the top four. They, will they get a group? Will they get a major bowl win with just one loss? Of course they will. But my whole point would be, even if, once again, like I'm saying, I really don't see, and they have to jockey themselves in order to justify by not putting Cincinnati in. That's why I don't think they'll be in the top one at the beginning. That's my theory. The, uh, my, my mindset on this is because if you start them number two right now, how are you going to justify if they continue to win to drop them down the polls if you don't do it right now? Because Michigan State, if they're undefeated and they play and they lose – to a one-loss or Ohio State team, do you drop them that far? You know what I mean. Do you drop you? Do you drop an undefeated? You can't drop an undefeated Oklahoma team. You know, so you're talking about who are you going to justify when you're talking about all this major bowl money and all that stuff? You can't. You can't. You're gonna. And then you also. And I didn't think about it just till now. You got to also justify. Why would you put Cincinnati in a bowl game to these major cities at these bowl games, even though they're playoff games? But you, these people are counting on bodies in the um, stands, um, butts in the seats, and heads in the beds. Are you really going to put the University of Cincinnati, who is enrollment and is not as half as good as Ohio State or Michigan State's, in a bowl game when Nick, when you can put one of those schools in instead? I don't see how they're going to adjust because you got to think about all those dollars and cents. That's why I'm thinking it's really, 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 uh, you know, I, I would be very, very surprised if Cincinnati's in the top five, is in the top four and, and when they reveal this, when they reveal these uh, bowl rankings. Agreed. So, okay. All right. Let's move on here. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh. My team. But the main thing we were all concerned of was, you know, we'd be all right as long as we, now that we know we got a quarterback. Um, I think the question, I I watched the game and I wanted to see week to week, are we getting better? I think we had, we we played their, obviously one of their better games in the last few weeks, the Cincinnati game where they played, they played very well, I thought, and came up short. Um, Obviously the, the game, with Miami, they figured out a way to win the game. But this game, it seemed like the two weeks off, they've got too much pats on the back. And they went over there and utterly laid an egg. And I thought that I saw a regression from Trevor Lawrence. Um, there was a couple of throws that I thought I was watching Gardner Minshew, where he was throwing a few throws in the dirt. Um, it didn't look as athletic that I had hoped. And on top of that, he made some more bad reads. He had a couple of bad decisions where he could have threw the ball and got some guys open that he held the ball. And then he threw the ball to some guys he should have held the ball. It was just like his decision making had regressed. And I'm like, if he's gonna, if we're gonna move forward, we need him to really improve. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, you know, is in your opinion, is he regressing? And if he is regressing, is it because of him or is it because of the coach? I want everyone to to sit down with me for a second. Let's go back a couple of months. In fact, let's go back to the draft. And I kept telling everyone, I was like, hey, I know y'all love this Trevor Lawrence kid. He's like really, really good, but uh, hold your horses. (laughs) I I personally wouldn't draft him at number one. Because we, we don't have what what it takes to, to hold a guy like this. And everyone got on me like, oh, my God, we know we're going to draft him. We know we're going to get him at number one. We know we're gonna, and I was like, oh, hold on, hold on, just chill. And, but listen, y'all, Trevor Lewis isn't regressing. That's the good news. I'm going to be honest with you. He's not. He was who we thought he was. <laughs> that, and and – and I, and I keep telling y'all this, and it is not to be like, "Oh, I told you so." He he was who we I thought he you. was. Like, like yeah, y'all understand this? We watched a QB for the last two and a half years. You really know before he took over the starting job at Clemson with all stars. It's a reason why Clemson ran the ACC for like the last three, four years. They had a stacked team. Dabo. 
Sweeney and company literally made that team unbeatable. Recruiting yes, again. Recru- <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, listen, people, I, I could go into to, to detail about how Dabble Sweeney put pieces around this man that just made him look great. And not saying Trevor Lawrence isn't a good talent. I'm not saying that at all. He's a great quarterback. He's going to be a good quarterback. But the the downside of being having the number one pick it means that you absolutely sucked the year before. Mm-hmm. And I kept asking, who's going to block for Trevor Lawrence? There were no answers. Mm-hmm. I can say, who's Trevor Lawrence going to throw to? I mean, yeah, they got Marvin Jones. Cool. Marvin Jones runs about three routes. They got LaVisca Chanel. Now, he's but, regressed. But, yeah, you know I mean? He's only in his second, what, second or third year? Mm-hmm. I'll probably get DJ tailback. They got, you know, DJ Chark, but DJ mm-hmm. Chark's injured. They got a little baby like the, tight end. I do like the number look, the, the 39, um, the kick returner. He's been playing good. He's probably the only playmaker, really. Right. They got Agnew. You know what I'm saying? But you can't play special teams all game. Yeah. You know, you, they, they got – wide receiver, they, they probably need to work him at there instead of keep worrying about what he can do as special teams because they need some help at the yeah. wide spot. They got a, a few defensive I mean, players, you know what I'm saying? They got a few tight ends in the, in the room. But they don't have – the same talent that Trevor Lawrence has been playing with the past two and a half years, people. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, I didn't say that to knock Trevor Lawrence. I didn't say that to even knock Urban Meyer. Mm-hmm. But you had a rookie head coach in his first year in the NFL who was led by a rookie general manager mm-hmm. who was recruiting a rookie quarterback and thought you were going to just run the table? Like, I, and, and, and that's not a shot at everyone who believed that they could, but people, let's be realistic here. Football is played on the field, not on paper. <laughs> and and we, we, we keep having these high hopes of what Trevor Lawrence can do. But, guys, I kept saying they had I, – and, I, and I, I, I'm very wordy on purpose – just because that's just how I talk. And I, I use the term, they have a lot of potential to be great. I never said, yeah, this looks really good. They're going to score every down. Oh, yeah, man. Shoot, y'all better be careful because they're marching on the field on you right now. Like, this team has the potential to be great one day. That ain't today. <laughs> no. It obviously wasn't Sunday against I'll the I'll put it about three years from now, maybe. You know what I mean? So... Two to three years. No, he, no, he's not regressing. What he, what you're seeing is a quarterback who's trying to be superhero, and he has no Justice League. Okay. What, you, what you're seeing is somebody trying to be Captain America without the Avengers. <laughs> I love that analogy. Like, bro, bro's literally trying to be Jesus Christ with no disciples. It does not work, and so. You can't expect him to be this great quarterback when he does not have these a multitude of people around him to be that great quarterback. Peyton Manning didn't do it by himself, people. Mm, that's true. Tom Brady would be the first person to tell you he can't do it by himself. You know, I can. You, we can let John Elway, Eli, you know, Eli Manning. We, we, we can, let, you know, go back into to all the great quarterbacks. You know, Roger Starbuck, you know, uh, Brett Favre. You know, list goes on and on and on. They did not do it by themselves. They had help. Mm-hmm. Travis that's Lawrence that. can look around that locker room. Ain't much help to be had. And so that's what he's dealing with. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Man. Man, that was great analogy. And so I will take it that he's, he's, he's status quo and we just got to get better talent around him. I want to do one little bonus topic that came up today and it hit the vlogs, which I think is, who uh, 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 it was kind of like an earthquake for me as far as the football news that the Denver Broncos traded their Hall of Famer, soon to be Hall of Famer, Von Miller to the Los Angeles Rams to be paired up with probably the, one of the top defenses already. And then you've got Aaron Donald 
that you beat double team for. Now you put Von Miller on the outside. Are they now the number one choice to win the Super Bowl right now? And you know they they're they're seeing me once again putting all ships in the middle of the table to try to make this run to say we're going to win the Super Bowl. I want to get your take on that before we close out the show. It's not fair. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any cool metaphor to use for you. Just it's not fair. It's, it's not fair. I, I'm I'm I'm. I work during the day, and I saw that come up on Instagram, and I, I, I literally yelled out, yelled out a word that if I said it right now, the FCC probably would shut this video down. Like, listen, <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, and then 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 I scrolled a few uh, moments down and saw Adrian Peterson is getting ready to sign with the Tennessee Titans. It's not fair. Yeah. It's, it's not fair. But but I mean, yeah, Von Miller next to Aaron Donald with Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. And and yeah, it's not fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately for the rest of us that we gotta look there and watch everybody have chances to be great teams and we can't even get uh you know, we can't even get a, a tight end and for a six round pick next and he goes as he goes as a seven round pick, some other team that's winning. I'm like, Really, dude? Like I'm I'm talking about Zach Ertz. We you know they wanted him and they couldn't get him and they okay, but uh, but that's it, man. I, I appreciate that. We I, Once again, folks, if you like this kind of content, please hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. Once again, also, please support my sponsors. Uh, watch Game Film, Team Sports Rhetoric, Women's Tackle Football League. Um, just And uh, I'm going to put some stuff on the MandarinTigers.com, a great youth organization. Come out and support them. They're trying to do a lot of things for the youth and the community, especially in Jacksonville, Florida. So hit up MandarinTigers.com and, and make them a donation. But, man, it was a great show. We're going to get together again real, real soon to get this thing again. Uh, man, I know you've been busy, but I, I've been having so much fun. And uh, I think we're getting, we're getting close uh, to 18 months doing this now. So it's um, been such a blast working with you. And I can, thank God we can continue with that. But I um, want to say, tell everybody out there, until next week, I'll go for my illustrious co-host, Andre L. Sullivan, our great producer, Grand Mel Vooley Fowler of All Sports High. We'll see you right back here next week on the Terry McGriff Show, and you guys be blessed. Yeah.